Okay, friends, subscribers, and all you YouTubers out there, I'm going to play you a um, little Reefer Madness original trailer. All right. Now, the reason why I'm playing this is mainly to the fact that the whole pot prohibition started because of this fucking movie, right? This is a government propaganda from self-righteous assholes back in the 30s, right? They made up shit. They got pot smokers out to be murderers and shit like this. Fucks, this is a joke. Yeah, okay, I've got to admit, in illegal pot land in the old days, yeah, people did die because, unfortunately, they left the sales of it to, yeah, the crime lords, unfortunately. And when crime lords get involved, crime happens. But the problem is, the pot smokers weren't anything wrong with them. Now, I got to experience for a week what it was like. I was in Canberra after my stroke. I had a stroke and I spent a time at a week's a friend's house down in Canberra. And uh, not to go and smoke pot. It was I was going down because he was afraid that something was going to happen to me. So he said, "Come and you're spending a week with me." He even drove up, drove me back after I after a week down there. And luckily, it's legal down there. I got to use and see. I'm also a very severely injured person. I suffer chronic back pain. I suffer knee pain. I have arm injury. I have carpal tunnel in both hands. All right extremely pain. Anybody that's suffered carpal tunnel and wrist pain and arthritis pain, they know how painful these pains are. And if you suffer back pain, 90%, 90, sorry, 99% of Australia that suffers chronic pain is forced to take a narcotic drug. Yes, I take a narcotic drug, which I hate. I hate the damn thing more than the government. They're trying to get everybody off it. But if they don't offer an alternative that actually is known to work, because, yes, it's known to work, but I'm going to show you this reefer madness video. This is what all the prohibition started from by the, the 1930s. It's about time that it stopped. Alcohol kills more fucking people than pot. Oh, that's right. Pot itself has never killed a single person. Never, ever killed one single person. Never. No one has ever died of a pot overdose. No one. Yet people die every day from the drugs that these bastards keep me on because they prohibition the only drug that will work that I can't get fucking addicted to and trust me, you can't get addicted to this shit. The ones that say that you can get addicted are the ones that don't ever try it. Trust me. For the solid week, I never took one fucking painkiller. Not one. Not an Endo, not a Panadine Ford. I didn't go to the doctors and ask for anything. Not one. Why? Because I actually, for a week, was legally allowed to smoke. And I think I had three joints a day. I had one in the morning. I had one for lunch. And I had one just before I went to bed. I slept like a baby. I was pain-free. Well, I didn't drive because, well, I was at a friend's house and it is illegal to drive when you smoke pot. So, yeah, I spent a week not driving. I didn't even have my car down there, so it was pit fucking hard to drive. But even if I did, I wouldn't drive anyhow if I used. I'm not stupid. I like to live. Most pot smokers like to live. Uh, it's sort of... The problem is the hypocrites in government well, the hypocrites in Canberra. Make it legal for them, then leave it up to the states to make their own fucking rules. If it's legal in fucking Canberra, it should be legal in every fucking state, whether it be for recreation, like in Canberra, or medical marijuana, which should be made fucking legal. But do you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to change it so they can get a patent on it. Trust me, they've got patents on it. So that they can do something to it, make it more, make it dangerous like the fucking rest. Is Agenda 21 real? I'm beginning to think maybe it fucking is. Because they're now trying to use the one drug that actually has been used 
for thousands of years. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play you the Reef of Madness, and then we're going to go into it. Even if I have to fucking read it, I will. Because there's a page out there shows the history of the use of pot. It's been used in China for over a thousand fucking years as a medicinal painkiller. Trust me, it has. There's evidence to fucking prove it. There was a guy even buried thousands, oh, I think they said 2,000 years. A two pound of pot with him when he, when he, when he was buried for the afterlife. So they knew that this drug, and it has always been a natural drug. See, pot, the strange thing is, the human body has a receptor in the brain that has no other purpose except to attach to a cannabis receptor, right? From the cannabis comes into the body, the body accepts it. That's its only fucking purpose. For God's sake, this is God sent. If it's made into our system that we have one fucking receptor that does nothing else, why in the fuck have they got this illegal? Why? Because even these pollies have got their little dirty hands in the drug companies. They don't want it fucking legal. Why? Because they make money off all these dangerous fucking drugs. Pot cures fucking so many things. It's been proven fucking in America. It's legal in fucking America, now Canada, and so many other countries. Yet fucking New South Wales, oh, you've got to be fucking end of life to get something that can help you get off fucking narcotic drugs. They're going on about everything. Even my doctor says, oh, we've got to try and get you down on these doses and everything like that. And I say, yeah, I fucking want off them. But no, I can't because it's the only fucking drug. I've been trialled on so many fucking painkillers. Right, I've been trialled on fucking gabapentum, epilim. Yes, epileptic drugs. They even sometimes actually do work for painkillers for people. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. I had side effects. I have a side effect to a lot of drugs. I've never had a side effect to the, the pot since I smoked it. It's now been uh, was just before Christmas when I was in Canberra. Never had a side effect. Never had one. Yet I get fucking shitloads off the drugs they give me. I can't shit. I can't do anything. Do you know that my system might work so fucking well when I was on cannabis for that fucking week? Yet this government is fucking withholding something that Canberra has already said is fucking legal. I'm sick of the fucking states doing shit like this. We should, and I'm telling everybody, if you suffer pain, for fuck's sake, vote the Green Party. I'm going to fucking vote the Green Party next election. I'm going to vote these assholes out. I'm going to vote them out so embarrassingly... <laughs> beaten by the Green Party, not the Green Greens, the Greens, the pot smoking party, who will fucking legalise it. Because if that's the only way I can get a painkiller that I know is not going to fucking kill me like the drugs they've got me on, it's a fucking joke, folks. All because of shit back in the 19 fucking 30s. Watch this trailer. Not the movie, the trailer. I can't show you the movie, but I can show you the trailer. These high school boys and girls are having a hop at the local soda fountain. Innocently, they dance. Innocent of a new and deadly menace lurking behind closed doors. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. See, the burning roots of hell. Uh, but I'm going to take the sound away for a reason. I wanted to play it up to there so you can hear that much. Plus, there's a 10 second rule. Right, but I'm going to show you the rest. It is only a trailer, so I can show the trailer without getting affected. So I'm going to turn the sound off, and then I want you to listen because I'm going to talk through this. Right, so if you're not a pot smoker, right? In this room, then, you will see the ease right. in which this vicious plant Yeah, it grows, grows fucking easier. But it doesn't grow as fucking easy as what the fucking uh, opium they grow down in Tasmania. Yeah, I fucking saw that when I was down in Tasmania buying a house. Uh, trust me, it's all over the fucking place down there. And this is enslavement? That's called love. Fuck. And these, they portray these people 
Like they're jumping around, going fucking barmy, killing people, shit like that. Not a si- fucking it doesn't happen, man. Doesn't happen. Debauchery! Fuck, that's called sex these days. Everybody has sex. Murder. Suicide. Bullshit. I've never known anybody on fucking pop to fucking jump out of a fucking window. They're too fucking mellow. All their fucking depression disappears. Pot has been used for depression for fucking years. Oh shit, the music's still on. Sorry, I forgot about the fucking YouTube being on. Alright, um, sorry that was coming over the mic. But no, look at them. They're fucking... Yeah, people laugh, so fucking what? But do you know, 95% of the time, if apparently and I've gone, gone, gone through what I've been told, that these joints, and I watched this fucking... Um, Netflix so called disjointed this actually spurred me on and everything a little bit because you get to see what these strains can do it's sort of then it's ironic this disjointed is actually an anti-pop show but they're sort of showing some truths in that show there's a little thing about the gridiron for marijuana gridiron players for marijuana or something like that and I checked into it. That fucking thing actually exists. These gridiron players who smoke pot to get rid of the pain. Right? Mine are... Sp- well, half of my injuries are sport injuries. The other half are fucking work injuries. Because we didn't have fucking work, bulk health and safety back in the fucking old days. But no. Our governments want us to sit there and suffer in fucking pain and only take the drugs that they fucking make money off. That's fucking bullshit, folks. And it really fucking is. It's, a, it's about fucking time that Australia and the rest of the fucking world that still doesn't have it legalised, right? And I'm going to read this in sentences, sections with a computer, by the way, because it's bags a dummy if I don't do it slowly. Right, so I've re- written and even written a letter to the government. I've actually put, telling them my story, fucking talking about it, even sending them a link to this fucking webpage. Um, back to the library, I'll start a new one. Oh, sorry. It, um, good thing about this, this reads everything I write. So, um, they sent me a link to this uh, thing because all, all the... all the, the only people that can get it here in Australia and unfortunately are uh, end-of-life patients who need it, by the way. They do need it. And um, But cannabis... In Chinese medicine, fuck, thousands of years, folks, thousands of fucking years. So why in the hell is the government stopping this? And it's like, it's the state governments that are stopping this. It's legal in Canberra, and they've left it up to the states, which is bullshit. It's legal for them in the fucking pollies. Ten ten to one, they're all sitting down having a toke, laughing at all us poor suckers. Right? We are the fucking Australian people. We make the fucking rules. Right? We ask them to do it for us, but maybe this should go to a referendum, and it's about time there was a pot referendum. You want to know something? If it's held responsibly, we'd fucking win, but we know they're going to fucking rig the election like they rig every other fucking election. They do, trust me. Why do you think they ask you to use a pencil, not a pen? Why? So they can change the fucking vote. Anybody that doesn't take their own pen to an election is an idiot. Because they only give you a pencil. Because as soon as they get a, a pencil fucking one, they're going to change the vote to whatever they fucking want when we're not around. Because trust me, when they're reading the votes, they're not reading the votes. They're changing the fucking votes. It's bullshit. It's about fucking time things changed. Cannabis in Chinese medicine. Cannabis has been continually documented in Chinese medicine for 1800 years. In the modern era, it's a keens, commonly referred to as seeds and known in TCM as humeren, are frequently used as a moistening laxative and are official in the Chinese Pharmacopoeia, CP, 2015. All parts of the cannabis plant have been recorded in historical Chinese medical texts including the akin, seed, female inflorescence, leaf, and root, as well as the cortex of the stalk and the water used to process the stalk into fiber. However, only the akins, seeds, are currently used in clinical practice, 
Brandt and Wiseman, 2008. In contrast to the prominent use of the Akins in Chinese medicine, many applications of cannabis in early Western medicine focused on preparations made from the female flowering tops of drug varieties of cannabis, which were featured in early Western pharmacopoeia texts from the 19th to 20th century, Wood, 1918. In the modern era, the investigation of cannabis for medical purposes in the West has continued to primarily focus on cannabinoids, resulting in prescription medicines such as the botanically derived drug Sativex by GW Pharmaceuticals, a mixture of Delta 9 THC and cannabidiol in an or mucosal spray that is sold by prescription in 15 countries, including the UK, Germany, Italy, Canada, Australia, and Spain. Russo ETAL, 2007. Right, that's the start of it. I'm gonna, I'm playing this a bit out of order, right, for a reason, because I want you to get the best parts last so you remember them, right? But I'm gonna put the stuff as the order I think it should have been written. The notable contrast between the medical applications of cannabis in traditional Chinese medicine and Western medicine has been poorly explored in current ethnopharmacological literature. Despite the fact that cannabis preparations have been extensively and consistently documented in Chinese Benko, Materia Medica, texts for 1800 years, no English language publications have systematically assessed the medicinal indications of cannabis in the Chinese Benko literature and historical changes in the plant parts used. Few reliable translations of Chinese monographs on cannabis from traditional Benko texts exist, which has led to significant gaps in the Western understanding about how cannabis was used in Chinese medicine. Additionally, Many problems related to cannabis and TCM remain unresolved in the contemporary Chinese literature. Modern Chinese journal articles as well as historical authors have attempted to clarify the complicated nomenclature of the female inflorescence in Benko literature, Lu and Shang, 1992, Lu, 1999, Lu ETAL, 2009, Wei ETAL, 2010, and monographs in modern TCM texts detail different plant parts and their use across a range of historical texts. Editorial Committee, 1977, Kui and Ran, 1993. However, a number of modern and historical Chinese sources contradict each other in terms of which plant parts correspond to certain traditional drug names such as Mafen, Mahua, and Mabo complicating the interpretation of their medical actions. Okay, well, that's not over yet, folks. Just bear with me. It takes a little bit of time to do this. As the difference between drug and fiber varieties of cannabis is largely determined by genetics, the historical and geographic prevalence of different biotypes of cannabis in China likely influenced its applications in Chinese medicine. However, this crucial question has received only limited attention in the Chinese literature. Furthermore, most Chinese publications that have attempted to address the topic of speciation as it relates to the historical application of cannabis in Chinese medicine utilize a relatively simplistic taxonomic model that does not take recent scientific advances into account. Lu and Shang, 1992, Wei ETAL, 2010. Okay, that was more about the cannabis, okay? Cannabis in Chinese medicine, right? But this is pretty much tells you what it is, what it's about, okay? And sorry, hang on. Forgot a little bit. The abstract, this is an abstract of the whole document. And the thing is, this is true, folks. This has been used as a medicine for so fucking long that it is beyond a joke for thousands of fucking years. Thousands, 1800 years, 1800 years, for nearly 2000 years. Right? There's evidence to prove this. Abstract Cannabis Sativa L. Cannabis E, 
has a long history of utilization as a fiber and seed crop in China, and its akines, seeds, as well as other plant parts have been recorded in Chinese medical texts for nearly 2,000 years. While the primary applications of cannabis in Chinese medicine center around the use of the akines, ancient indications for the female inflorescence, and other plant parts include conditions such as pain and mental illness that are the subject of current research into cannabinoids such as cannabidiol, CBD, and delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, THC. However, little previous research has been conducted to analyze the Chinese medical literature in light of recent advances in the pharmacology and taxonomy of cannabis and most of the relevant Chinese historical records have not yet been translated into Western languages to facilitate textual research. Furthermore, many key questions remain unresolved in the Chinese literature, including how various traditional drug names precisely correspond to different plant parts, as well as the implications of long-term selection for fiber-rich cultivars on the medical applications of cannabis in Chinese medicine. In this article, prominent historical applications of cannabis in Chinese medicine are chronologically reviewed, and indications found in ancient Chinese literature that may relate to cannabinoids such as CBD and Delta-9 THC are investigated. Keywords, Cannabis, Chinese Medicine, Historical Changes, Benko, Cannabidiol. Right, so that's an abstract of the document, right? Now, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to play this a little bit out of order because I want you to understand it a bit more. I wanted to get that crap out of the way about all the different things and everything like that. But this is proof, right? But see, back in the 1930s... Introduction Cannabis Sativa L. Right, I'm going to pause this for a sec. In the 1930s, right, the nylon industry, the nylon rope industry started up, right, back then. And see, hemp rope was killing them. They couldn't get it out there. So what they had to do, they had to kill that. Oh, hang on. Nylon rope. Nylon's made of fucking oil. Oh, that's right. The oil industry kills something. This was most probably the first thing they killed. Right, the oil industry. Because see, cannabis can be made into fuel. Yeah, it can be made into a biofuel. Did you know that? Yeah, it can be can be made into fibre. Oh, that's right, they make fucking plastic fibre that you wear every fucking day. You call it nylon. And you sweat like a pig in it because you're wearing a plastic fucking bag. That's right, that's made of oil too. Yet this fibre was natural. Right, and the reason why I know that's anti-pot, that show was anti-pot, is because they're going on about the hemp weevils and things like that. Yeah, hemp weevils do get into shit. But hemp weevils don't get into properly processed hemp clothing. It wouldn't be allowed to be sold if they did. For fuck's sake, I can go to the local store now and I can buy hemp seed fucking protein powder. Yeah, that's right, hemp seed protein powder. <laughs> Problem is, I take that, I get arrested for fucking being on pot because it's going to show up as me being a pot smoker. So you can't really eat it. You eat it, you're going to be in a lot of shit. Because when you're pulled over and they do the drug test, yep, it's going to show up in your system. I've got a friend that was on it and didn't smoke pot, but tried this thing. He was recommended to it, get it hourly. And he got tested and fucking lo and behold, he's now going to court. And he's even taken the bag to prove why he had cannabis in his system. Right? But for fuck's sake, this is going beyond a joke. Do you know cannabis? Cured my pain for a solid fucking week. That fucking week, I did not take one fucking narcotic drug. I lost 10 kilos. Why did I lose 10 kilos? Because my system wasn't backed up because of all the narcs that I'm forced to take. And then I'm legally allowed to take. Legally allowed to take, by the way. And I've even got a government authority to take them. Why? because nothing else fucking works to kill my pain. I suffer a great deal of pain. I've, I've got a 37 inch, uh, sorry, not 37 inch, how long is it? Uh, that's eight, down, scoop. I think it's 20, 20, 20, 22 inches wide 
with 37 stitches in it. Sorry, I got the stitches mixed up with the width. And um, yeah, 37 stitches. And trust me, they're big fucking stitches wide apart. This is back in the old days when they cut you across your back. My operation caused me more pain than anything. Now they do the operation correctly, cut downwards on your spine, so they're not cutting all the muscles, because they found out when they operated on people that had bad back injuries, right, they cut all the muscles across your back and made us worse, because we've got no muscular support now. I've got a bad knee that they won't fucking fix because I'm slightly overweight, because I'm stuck on fucking narcotic drugs and can't shit. And I've got to be honest about it, folks. I can't shit a lot of the times. I have to take Spenna, um, not, not, not Spenna, what's it called? Senna, um, to help me shit. I have to take that every fucking day. Every fucking day. Because it's the only way I can go to the dummy. But, yeah, that week in Canberra, Man, I shat like a normal fucking person. Why? Because I wasn't taking fucking narcotic drugs that bound my system up every fucking day. Made it work so fucking well, I didn't want to come home. I didn't want to come home, but I knew I couldn't stay there any longer because he had fucking to go, go back to work and he knew that I was safe, so he was happy and so I was happy. But for one week, I got off those dangerous fucking drugs. And trust me, they know they're dangerous because they're advising not to give them to people if they don't need them. Why? Because they're fucking deadly. They know it, but they still fucking force us to take them. Because why? Because they won't put the one fucking drug out there that will stop our pain. They want to change it first so they can get a patent on the cunt. And then... Oh, they can make money off it. But the dopey bastards don't realise. They can make money off it anyhow, no matter fucking what. The Americans make money off it. They tax the fucking pot shops. They tax them. Oh, they also raid them. And fucking, because they, they, they're they really cunning in America. They made it legal fucking in the States, but fucking federally illegal. Where It should be fucking federally legal over there as well. And it should be fucking federally legal here. So many fucking back patients would be out of pain. And trust me, it stops the pain. It really stops the fucking pain. And it stops you from being bound up. It stops you from fucking freaking out. You get to sleep like a fucking log. Do you know my mate said I slept the very first night for 16 hours? Now, if I did that, stopping to take my fucking tablets like I did, right? if I did that up here, I'd be screaming in fucking agony. And I mean screaming in agony because once I had to stop taking the tablets because I just couldn't take them anymore and I was in fucking agony. And then the doctors put me straight fucking back on them. Trust me. They had no choice because nothing else fucking worked. Yet I found something that does fucking work. Marijuana. Cannabis. It fucking works. And it has been fucking used. Now I'm going to play get to this introduction on the video right and as I said yes it's fucking out of order so it's out of order for a reason and I want you to listen to the order that I put it in has been cultivated in China for millennia for use as Sorry. a fiber okay let's start this again introduction cannabis sativa L has been cultivated in China for millennia for use as a fiber food and medicine References to cannabis are found throughout classical Chinese literature, including in many famous works of philosophy, poetry, agriculture, and medicine. Fiber-rich biotypes of cannabis, hemp, were extensively used in ancient China for clothing and the production of paper, rope, and fishing nets, dye, 1989, and the akins, seeds of cannabis have been continuously used in Chinese medicine for at least 1,800 years. Today, China is regarded as one of the world's ancient epicenters of hemp cultivation, resulting in a diverse germ plasm with genetically distinct regional varieties of fiber-rich hemp that are... And that happens all the time. Today. China is regarded as one of the world's ancient epicenters of hemp cultivation, resulting in a diverse germ plasm with genetically distinct regional varieties of fiber-rich hemp that are adapted to local environmental conditions throughout the country. Gao ETAL, 2014. Zhang ETAL, 
2014. The prominence... Okay. Now, did you hear that? Making paper. We're fucking chopping down all the trees and shit like that. Old growth forests just to make paper. Just to be ground up and make paper. Right? They've got to plant fucking new forests all the fucking time. But hemp can grow grown so quickly... So why the fuck aren't we using it for paper? Oh yeah, we are now, slowly, but only a certain amount of people that have been granted the licenses. And a lot of the hemp products now are coming from America because they're back growing hemp in America and hemp should be grown. And they say, oh no, well you can only grow the ones that don't have the sativa in it, right? Because sativa is one of the, the, the inners of the plant and trust me, there's a lot more that I don't know because I've only learned about it for a couple of weeks now since just before Christmas. And all those little ingredients inside the hemp plant are the ones that talk to the body, that do the same trick as what the narcotic drug like morphine, endone do. It tricks the mind into thinking you're not in pain. But guess what? It actually does stop the fucking pain. Why? Because we have a receptor in our fucking brain that is only and will only talk to the cannabis receptor. Right? Because when drugs come into our body, they've all got little receptors that talk to the body and shit like that, and they've got to design them to talk to the body. But hemp? No fucking way. Cannabis is naturally in our bodies and we recognise it because we've got that one fucking little receptor that only talks to cannabis. It won't talk to any other substance. It will only talk to cannabis. Why? Because God made it that fucking way. So, yeah, you've got to fucking look at it. And this document is going to be in the description. I want you to all go and read it. And if you're in Australia, for fuck's sake, write your local fucking politicians and tell them this shit has got to stop. We've got to allow fucking people to take this drug. Yeah, they just give it to end-of-life patients. We don't have enough fucking research. What the fuck is this? This is 1,800 years of fucking research. The hemp in ancient Chinese culture can be seen by its occurrence in classical literature from the Warring States period, 475 to 21 BC, including philosophical works by Confucius, Mencius, Sun Tzu, Zhuang Tzu, and Ma Tzu, as well as the classic of poetry, Xi Jing, Sun, 2016. By the 1st to 2nd century AD, the ancient Zhuowen Dictionary, Zhuowen Gzi, featured multiple Chinese characters that illustrate knowledge of the dioecious nature of cannabis and discriminate based on gender, Lu, 1999. In the 6th century AD, the agricultural text Essential Techniques for the Welfare of the People, Qi Min Yao Shu, described techniques for the cultivation of hemp in great detail. Don't take any notice of the reader, it's always out of whack, one it's of a the first fault with this reader. First textual documented applications of fertilizer in the history of Chinese agriculture, Shi, 1957. This text also demonstrates the knowledge that removal of male plants at the initiation of flowering will result in a lack of seeds. However, this bug is actually the reason I won't pay for this product and only use the trial version because it drives me nuts and never reads the fucking text in the right fucking spot. It used to in the older version of it, used to read it properly. But in this newer version, no fucking way I'm buying this newer fucking version. Don't fucking work properly. Look at it. It's fucking out of whack. Worse than being fucking, yeah, I'm high on drugs. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, just a joke. It was a joke, folks. The text focuses exclusively on cultivation and harvesting practices to maximize the production of seeds and the quality of fiber and does not reference the deliberate production of seedless cannabis. Yeah. She, 1957. It is notable that most classical Chinese references focus on the use of cannabis for its seeds and fiber, with few, if any, explicit references to drug effects seen outside of the medical literature. Although early Chinese medical literature suggests that both drug and fiber biotypes of cannabis were known in ancient times, 
more research is needed to clarify the implications of these different biotypes in medical applications. Additionally, further research is needed to probe whether the medical applications of cannabis in ancient Chinese literature may relate to non-psychoactive cannabinoids such as cannabidiol CBD, which may have been present in ancient fiber biotypes as well as drug biotypes. See figure figure 11. Right, see, it's been known for fucking years that it don't fucking hurt you. Do you read one thing where people die from it? No. Why? Because no one's ever died from fucking cannabis. Unless they've been in a fucking drug deal that's gone wrong when it was fucking illegal in America. Right? Or druggies that fucking ran the industry and yes, unfortunately, they're going to be out of a fucking job. Wake up, Parliament House. You're going to put all the druggies out of fucking business. When people smoke cannabis, they don't use other drugs. Oh yeah, it's a gateway for other drugs because you're letting fucking drug dealers sell it. Right? Stop stop the drug dealers st selling it and make it fucking legal so they don't can't sell it to people or make it so that people don't need to go to them, like i.e. make it so it's legal to grow a plant like it is in most countries now and have your own plant because then they can't introduce us to the other ones. People like me don't have to take dangerous fucking medical drugs that you guys fucking get a profit off. Mate, you're going to be surprised at how many fucking chronic back pain sufferers or chronic pain sufferers the moment it's fucking medically legal, properly medically legal, you watch how quickly endone sales go down. They're going to plummet. And I guarantee you they're going to plummet. Because people don't need that shit when they're smoking this. Or using oils and there's many ways to use cannabis. Right, you can smoke it. Yeah, it's not really good for your lungs. But yeah, it's not going to kill you any quicker than smokes are, for fuck's sake. It's actually most of going to be less because there's no fucking tar in this shit. The only time tar's in it if they mix it with, um, what do they call it? What did you call it? Oh, I forget what he called it. Yeah, they mix cigarette with it. That's the only time the thing I fucking didn't touch it with a cigarette I've been smoked in 20 fucking years. But the thing is, you mix a cigarette, you get the tars and shit like that. But because people have got to make it last. That's why they do it. But down in Canberra, he didn't have to make it last. He fucking had it legal. So yeah, work it out for fuck's sake. Biotypes of cannabis in China. The complicated taxonomic history of cannabis has been previously summarized in numerous publications. Schultz ETAL, 1974. Small and Cronquist, 1976. Hillig and Malberg, 2004. Cannabis is often described as a monotypic genus with wide morphological and chemical variation, and the flora of China and the Chinese pharmacopoeia adopt the monotypic classification of Chinese cannabis as Cannabis sativa L. Chen and Gilbert, 2006, CP, 2015. By contrast, Many of the Chinese publications that have investigated historical questions related to the speciation of cannabis in China right across the yellow different bit. dynastic periods have adopted a polytypic approach to nomenclature that primarily differentiates the genus into two species based on chemotype, with varieties focused on fiber and seed production described as C. Sativa L. And drug varieties described as C. Indica Lamarck. Lu Sheng, 1992, Lu, 1999. Cannabis is a classic example of taxonomic debates related to lumping versus splitting, i.e., whether the genus should be considered as monotypic or polytypic, as well as morphological versus chemotype distinctions. Advances in DNA research have added further complexity to the picture, and terms such as broad leaflet hemp, BLH versus broad leaflet drug BLD and narrow leaflet hemp NLH versus narrow leaflet drug NLD have recently been used to describe cannabis varieties based on a combination of morphology and chemotype. Pilaza ETAL 2013. 
and they say there's no fucking research out there. No fucking research? What the fuck is this? There's a lot of fucking research out there. 1785 even, they've fucking done research. Problem was, the oil industry was scared of hemp. They knew they couldn't sell their fucking plastic fucking rope. The complex debate about cannabis taxonomy initially developed after Lamarck proposed the name C. Now it's fucking playing up. Indica in 1785 to describe psychoactive Indian cannabis in contradistinction to Linnaeus' description of non psychoactive European hemp, Hillig and Malberg, 2004, which was regarded as C. Sativa L. While Lamarck's original type specimen of C. Indica reflected a narrow leaflet drug, NLD, variety. Schultz later applied the name C. Indica to refer to broad leaflet drug, BLD. I'm actually going to stop that there, right? Because it goes in, it goes into a lot of technical shit. So, the problem is that there is fucking thing. Now, here we go, materials and methods, okay? As I said, it's out of order. It's out of order for a reason, folks. Because half the shit, as you can see, the reason why I wanted to play that bit for you, they're just talking about the genus and things like that and the psychoactive results and things like that. And yes, cannabis is psychoreactive. That's why it is good. It actually reacts to those receptors in the brain. So they didn't know this back in the Chinese day, but that we had special receptors in our mind, in our brains, that only accept the cannabis drug. So, and then you got different ways they use it. And this is the last bit I'm gonna play. Materials and methods pre-modern Chinese Materia Medica texts, known as Benko, were systematically reviewed to investigate the historical applications of different parts of the cannabis plant. In particular, Records related to plant parts such as the flowers and leaves were comprehensively investigated for applications that may relate to cannabinoids such as CBD and Delta 9 THC. Such records may also help to clarify the evolution of fiber versus drug biotypes of cannabis in ancient China. Representative Benko texts were selected for analysis, including influential Benko texts from different dynastic periods thematic Benko texts dedicated to specialized topics, and regional Benko texts dedicated to specific geographic regions, Zhao and Chen, 2014. Additionally, modern Chinese Materia Medica compilations as well as texts focused on ethnic minority traditions in China were reviewed. The selected texts were organized chronologically by dynasty, and monographs on cannabis from Benko texts representing different historical periods were reviewed. Okay, now I'm just going to stop it there for one minute. Did you hear that? By fucking din dynasty. By dynasty. Do you know that Chinese emperors used cannabis? They were smart enough to use it as fucking medicine. But no, we have these self-righteous, and trust me, they're Christians that are doing it. I'm a Christian, it pisses me off, right? That since the 1930s, oh no, it's bad for our kids, because our kids were having a good fucking time. Yet those same fucking, uh, what's the word that I can use? Uh, self-righteous assholes, it doesn't say it. Hypocrite, that's the one. Those same hypocrites back in the 1930s, were drunks, most of them, even through prohibition, all through prohibition, they were drunks, they were drunks, and they, oh yeah, they had to stop it, oh, we had to stop alcohol, yet alcohol kills more fucking people than cannabis, fuck me. The sources were analysed based on the plant parts that were described as well as the nature, flavor, actions, and indications of the various cannabis materials within. A diverse range of properties and indications have been ascribed to various parts of the cannabis plant over the centuries, 
and space limitations preclude a comprehensive translation of all the Venko records related to cannabis. Thus, special attention was given to tracing the historical development of applications related to seizures, pain, and mental of... Now did you hear that? It stops seizures! How many fucking people have seizures? Mental illness? They treated people with mental illness with it. Why? Because it calms you the fuck down. That's all it does. But no, it was evil in the 1930s. It was evil, the evil drug, debauchery. Fuck, I know more debauchery from people that don't use that shit. Fuck me. It's about fucking time these states woke up to them fucking selves because they're going to get voted out, I can guarantee it. Thus, special attention was given to tracing the historical development of applications related to seizures, pain, and mental effects or mental illness, as these conditions have been the subject of extensive research in the context of cannabinoids such as CBD and Delta 9 THC, Mechalong ETAL, 2002, Devinsky ETAL, 2014. As cannabinoids are primarily concentrated in the female flowering tops and leaves rather than the achenes, cortex, and roots, these plant parts were emphasized in this review. See, they know it stops, it helps seizures, mental effects, mental illness, pain. They fucking know it. And this, this government, Oh, well, you can only have it if you're in the life. So fucking what? I'm 60 fucking years old. I don't know when the fuck I'm going to die, but I'm in a shitload of fucking pain now. Legalise the shit, will you? For fuck's sake. Everybody should speak up and say it's about fucking time. And those self-righteous Christians out there, go fuck yourself. I'm in a lot of pain. I need this shit. And I'm saying that to you. Go fuck yourselves. Because... I'm sick and tired of not being able to live without fucking pain and have to take these fucking dangerous drugs that are killing my kidneys. Yes, killing my kidneys. I've got severe kidney problems because of the drugs, the only ones that fucking work. Yet there is a drug out there that is naturally grown. We can grow it naturally. Oh, that's right. The government can't make any fucking money out of it. So they won't fucking legalise it. Yet they'll legalise it for themselves when they go to these big meetings in fucking Canberra with the federal government. They can pop down the shop and fucking... Or go down to a friend's place and whatever and have, have a joint. But we can't. They fucking can. I'm sick of these self-righteous fucking politicians. I'm sick of these self-righteous Christians that are blocking this from being fucking legal. This drug should be legal. It has been used for thousands of fucking years. Go and read this fucking website. Type it in. The history of cannabis use for medical purposes. You'll find that this is being used even back in Egypt. Not just in fucking China. In Egypt as well. It had a different name, but it was used. I'm pretty sure this is what they call myrrh. And that's right, it was given, myrrh was given to Christ as a gift. For fuck's sake. Everybody wake the fuck up, will you? God almighty. People out there that suffer a great deal of pain need this so we can get off those drugs that are killing us. And yes, those drugs are killing us. And yet you want us to take them? Why? So that our government can make fucking money out of it? Fuck me. It's about time. It's got to stop, folks. It really has to stop. Anyhow, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to put it on every fucking channel I own. I want this video. Make this video viral, folks. Get everybody to fucking watch this video because it's about time that this was fucking legalized. And no, I won't smoke it if it's legal. Not legal, sorry. But if it's legal, I'll fucking smoke it. It was legal in Canberra when I was down there, so I smoked it because it was legal. And I found out that fuck, I didn't need to take those dangerous fucking narcotic drugs after all because there's a, there's a drug out there that actually fucking works 
for a longer period of time than the fucking other one worked. And it, what it does, it just kills the pain. Because see, if when you're in pain, you don't get those euphoric effects. You just get pain fucking relief. See, there are strains out there, yeah, that they most probably will end up banning, even America. I reckon they'll ban them. But the thing is, I've never known it. I, when I was younger, yes, I did. I did bend a law or two when it came to this. But, see, I wasn't in as much pain back in those days. And I sort of always regretted doing it. But now that I know that I'm in the major agony, this would have fucking killed my pain all these fucking years and I wouldn't have had to take all those dangerous fucking drugs that have fucked my kidneys. Fuck me. Get together and make your fucking politician legalise this shit. It's legal in fucking Canberra, so if those fucking smart-ass pollies down in Canberra can have it, we can fucking have it. We voted them in, it's our fucking turn. And, and yeah, put it to a fucking referendum. I guarantee you it'll be legal by the end of the fucking day of referendum, for fuck's sake. Wake up. Those of you out there, oh no, pot's dangerous. Well, you haven't been in a lot of fucking pain, have you? The drugs that they give you for pain kill us. And they're starting to realise that, that people are dying from these fucking drugs that they're giving us. So they've got the... They've, I've even seen the medical journals where they're trying to stop it. Because they now know that these drugs are slowly killing us. That drug has never killed a single fucking person. Alcohol kills more people in one fucking week than cannabis has ever done in its complete history of thousands of fucking years. Wake the fuck up, people. Grow up and realise this is the fucking 21st fucking century, for fuck's sake. We need to legalise this stuff so people like me don't have to live in agony. And so that your dying relatives don't have to live in agony. I know so, so many people in a nursing home that can do with this shit. It's a joke, folks. It really is a fucking joke. But, see, even those people in the nursing home, did you know they can't get it until their end of life? Like, major fucking, yeah, major cancer problems, people who are dying fucking know they're terminal. Yeah, that's the only time you can get it at the moment. It's fucking wrong. Yet, dying in pain isn't considered fucking necessary. Yet, some of us actually suffer more pain than those people with cancer. Yes, sometimes people can suffer more pain than the people with cancer because pain is pain. Doesn't matter what section of the fucking body, what, what fucking section it's causing it, or what is causing it, pain is pain. It fucking hurts. I'm sick of being forced to take these fucking drugs that they give me. I'm fucking sick of it. And my week in Canberra was the best fucking week in my life because I didn't have to touch the shit because I got to smoke pot legally for one fucking week. And for that week, I didn't have a fucking problem. But see, the government doesn't know how to make money off it yet. So they're not fucking legalising it. Fuck me, this has got to stop. This has got to stop, folks. And I mean it's got to fucking stop. Because see, the word money comes into it. Government won't legalise it because they don't make any money. They've got to make money for it to be fucking legal. And that's fucking wrong, folks. That is way fucking wrong. Sorry, it's going to be a click here because my microphone was jammed up there and I had to unjam it. And, yeah, it's got to be fucking legalised soon, folks. There's too many people out there that are forced to take the same drugs that I'm forced to take. Too fucking many. A friend of mine recently passed away because of the same drug that I was given she decided the pain was too much and even those drugs weren't helping you know, I guarantee you if she had access to pot she wouldn't have fucking killed herself because the drugs that they've got me on more people top themselves every week every fucking week and there's more deaths with that drug than anything because if you accidentally OD when it's not hard you forget to took your tablet and take more you'll kill yourself you can't forget, you've got to keep a fucking journal. You've got to keep a diary, know when you're taking the shit. It's got to stop, folks. 
the bullshit and the prohibition has got to stop. Please help me make this video fucking viral. And guess what? You have my full, this is the only time I'm going to say it, you have my full permission to copy this video and put it on your fucking channel. Make this the most viral video in Australia around the fucking world because it's about time this shit stopped in every fucking country. Copy it, paste it, plug it, every fucking channel you can. You have my full fucking permission, but only this fucking video. Anyhow, thanks. I'm going to Thank you all for the back transition back. Thank you all for subscribing. And yes, my logo was on that. But thank you all for subscribing. And uh, yeah, I can't put that logo on for too long because it's going on every channel that I got. And um, so yeah, those of you out there, thanks for watching and don't worry, it'll be cut out in every other channel except for this one. So yeah, those of you out there that um, saw that, yeah, you're only going to see it on my channel, but you won't see it on my other channels. Thank you for subscribing. And yes, I smoke pot for a week legally. And it should be made legal in every fucking country, folks. This stuff works. There's thousands of years of evidence to prove that it's been used for pain. It's got other uses as well, mental illness, seizures, for fuck's sake. In America, they treat these things with this same fucking drug. This drug is now prescribed more than any other painkiller drug in America. Why? Because it works. People aren't dying from it. How, what do you fucking know? All those thousands of years they've known but started in America, then a moment America prohibitioned it, Australia prohibitioned it, everybody prohibited Because we've got to follow our big brother. We've got to do everything he says because the oil companies over there aren't making any money out of nylon or out of their oil because they need to make nylon ropes. So they put hemp industry out of, out of industry. And that's the real fucking reason, folks. Trust me. That's the real reason hemp got fucking done. So they made that video, so they even stopped the production of hemp. Hemp can be turned into fucking food, protein. It's the, the hemp seed is a protein. You can buy it at fucking Aldi, for fuck's sake. But if you're going to buy it, be prepared to get pulled over and fucking go to court and fight for the right to eat a protein powder. Fucking hell. Honestly, folks, the shit has got to stop, and it's got to stop now. For fuck's sake, we live in the 21st fucking century. I'll see you all later. Thank you for subscribing, and don't forget to subscribe. Click that little bell like in the demonstration, because if you don't click that bell, you're not going to get fucking notified. Thank you. And I've just realised something. I've got to cut the end of this video off.